Okay, now we have to calibrate the antenna tuner gain. So connect two dummy loads with a T connector to create a, a 25 ohm loan. So I have a, actually have a big bird watt meter, I mean a dummy load and a big old cantenna from the 70s. I have a T connector, an Amphenol T connector going to the output of the watt meter. So I'm going to go ahead and key the transmitter uh, with 10 watts of carrier and we got to adjust uh, our 15 debug until the A1 tune gain reads 600. So let me go ahead and transmit and we want to go up to 10 watts of carrier. So I think that's about 10 watts right there. So R15 is right here. Let me see where R15 is. That's the first one of the group of three. So that's this one right here. Okay, so now we're going to make sure A1 power tune gain reads 600. It reads about 670 right now, so I'm going to go ahead and jack that back. That's exactly 600. Put the, you put the amp in operate now, and it doesn't specify a band. Okay, we're going to set the transceiver to 7 megahertz. still transmitting that's why so we're gonna go down to seven megahertz let this uh, let this cool off for a second so we're gonna go to seven megahertz we're gonna go to menu debug we're gonna go it says key the transmitter is just enough drive to produce a hundred watts of output and operate so we shouldn't have any output with operate since we're not wired to the PA but um, I'll just go with the flow and, and trust what it says and put out a hundred watts through the exciter and On the R17 we're gonna adjust you know early we crank that down earlier, so here we go, so So I'm gonna go let's See I'm gonna go 7 megahertz I'm gonna go to power and I'm gonna hit transmit and I'm gonna crank up the power so it might not make 100 watts, but we're about 100 watts, okay. And then we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, we're going to just, our 17 are reading 100 to 150 to 160. So if I look at A2 power module out, it's not saying anything. So I don't know what to do about that test. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do anything. So 11 on the LPF forward power protection, it's not reading anything. Okay, so the next step would be to calibrate the low pass filter forward power protection. But the problem is, is if I read the instructions, it says set it to 7 megahertz, go to, go to operate menu, and uh, adjust for R17 for reading on A2PA and power module out. Problem is A2PA power module out doesn't show anything. So I don't know if the manual is, uh, is skipping that. We have to hook the RF back up to the main pallet or not. So if we go to the next one, calibrate input power protection. Um, it, it's kind of the same thing, right? So... I'm not too sure if we can do this after, but I'm I'm probably going to have to. So 11, 12. Uh, let me see if we could do so. So part 11, we got to skip. Um, I could transmit also all day long on on, and that A2 power module out doesn't show anything. So the next one we can check is uh, we want to adjust R2 for 2.5 volts DC on uh, pin 5 of NC1 so if you look at this uh, at that little pad right there that's actually connected to pin 1 so if I take my meter I'm going to use the same one that we used earlier that's the clamp on meter but it also has a DC scale I'm going to go ahead and just meter that see if we can get it all on film so we want 2.5 volts DC there all right this might be a little tricky set up all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the negative uh, 
pin out of the fan up in the top left corner and I'm gonna go right to this see what the power is 2.5 volts exactly so I'm not gonna adjust that anymore 2.4 2.5 volts I think we're pretty good right there okay so then the interesting thing is his um, um, it wants us to rotate this is where the failure always happened for me where R1 doesn't do anything so we want to go to 30 watts and uh, back uh, and crank up R1 until it kicks off so I'm just gonna leave it at 100 watts for about 92 watts I'm gonna see if we can get it to kick off here by cranking R1 nothing adjusts there it is so we're at the we're at the clockwise limit at R1 running 100 watts through the low pass filter without any indication of anything so we can try different bands the band switches full 100 watts in full clockwise with the with the uh, forward protection uh, power protection part and it never ever kicks off so so slowly turn R1 clockwise I turned it all the way and it can't go anymore so that's that uh, calibrate relative input power display so if we go to we got a standard setting on the display I'll close the uh, so we get a standard to setting and antenna I tried with the antenna tuner and without it set transceiver to 1.9 megahertz And we're going to go, let's see, key the transceiver just, transceiver power level, just below the power level in step 12. So we just want to, I'm going to bring it up to, I'm going to say 30, 35 watts, 30 watts, hit send. Now let me take it out of operate. So that's 30 watts. So we want to let's see if we go with 35. So now we want to adjust our 14. Our 14 is right here. Where's our 14? Our 14 is this loner over here. So we're going to turn that so the scale reads full. Okay, we've got to go to operate mode, that's why. Alright, so I wasn't in operate, so I'm going to go to operate mode. Now we're going to do it. Okay, same thing. and it's not doing anything so this isn't doing anything for us at all So I'm assuming that we got to be plugged into the. We have to hook up the the exciter back up to the to the amplifier, which doesn't make much sense to me at all. Star 14. Star 14. So I think I gotta hook it back up to the.
So it says that this all these steps are to take place without the, the RF pallet hooked up, but I think that's wrong. But uh, I, I think it's still a new product, and I'm hoping for the best. But, yeah, the, it's kind of crazy. Not only that, but the documentation's all over the place. So we're going to go ahead, and I'll solder it back onto the pallet, and hopefully we could do the calibration so steps that we missed. And calibrate the low-pass filter forward power protection. So I hooked up the RF pallet back up. And we're going to send a dip and see what happens. Still not showing the correct power input. Let me turn it down to 5 watts and put it into operate. So it's going with not in bias, but we're going to adjust our A2 PA power module L between 150 and 160. Still nothing. All right, let's put bias on. All right. Let's bias these chips to the bejesus, right? Let's see what happens here. Okay, 5 watts. That's about 800 watts out on uh, 1.9 megahertz. So, I don't think I could go any lower than that. So let's go, it says go to 7 megahertz and do it. A2 power, PA power module out is not saying anything. So R17, this is R17 is right there. R17, PA forward. I'm going to adjust this between 150 and 160. It says alternatively 425 for 500 watts out, but we can't even do that. Okay, so let me take this out of standby and put this back in standby and see what, if that shows anything. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So that PA module out thing is pretty, pretty different. So input power protection is going to be the same thing. It doesn't doesn't really trigger for me. So not sure I want to drive this with 300 watt, 30 watts at. I'm not sure I want to drive this with 30 watts at. I mean, it's going to be a lot. So, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to have power protection because uh, step 11 and 12 in the August 2018 calibration manual doesn't do shit. So, unfortunately, that's what we're up against. But the amplifier still works, and we'll still go ahead and use it. I have, uh, I have A1 cranked all the way to the right. I went all the way to the right and left, and no matter what I drive it with, the, uh, the manual doesn't, doesn't line up with the, with the documents. So it's kind of tough to 
it doesn't look like surprising that it hasn't been refined over the years but that's that's what I'm up against um, it's definitely an awesome amp and it just needs some development things so I can't do the input protection unfortunately so there's two things I can't I can't address 